biggest student behavior problems that we tend to see, non-compliance with adult requests, defiance of the rules, which, and those are related, of course, but slightly different. So non-compliance would be, Jimmy, um, take your feet off the desk. No. Okay. Um, as opposed to just defiance of the overall rules, like the rule is no running in the halls and Jimmy is forever running in the halls. Failure to work on assigned tasks, tantruming, aggression, overactivity or inattention. What are some other ones that you see as kind of high frequency problem behaviors in your settings? Okay, blurting, absolutely. Language. Okay, poor language. Verbal aggression towards teachers and other students. Okay, disrespectfulness, name calling. All right. Um, a few of the interventions that I'm going to just highlight today, one we already talked about is, is just the use of differential attention. I also want to talk briefly about behavioral momentum. How many of you are familiar with the concept of behavioral momentum? Homeschool notes, you know about those? Okay. And then use of consequences. So first thing to remember, of course, all kids are different. Um, and specifically, kids are different than adults in how they respond. So kids respond more concrete. Um, and they're more concrete in their approach to problems and the, how they understand situations. Again, we talked about that pesky frontal lobe. And even when kids don't have ADHD, just by virtue of being kids, their frontal lobe is not yet fully developed. That means that our favorite strategy is intelligent grown-ups, verbal reasoning. Who's with me? It's not as likely to be successful with kids, and especially really young kids. So verbal reasoning, explaining, discussing, nagging, arguing, all of those beautiful strategies, not as likely to be successful with younger kids. <clears throat> what is important instead? When we do research on effective strategies, we find three factors that are particularly important when we design a behavior plan. It needs to be predictable. The same thing needs to happen when I get it right. And then this, the, a different thing needs to happen when I get it wrong. And that needs to happen predictably. Because if it doesn't, it's going to really slow my learning curve as a kid. Contrast is important. So what happens when I get it right and what happens when I get it wrong need to be very different. Sometimes we have lovely, lovely families come into clinic. And when their child misbehaves, they will say in a very nice voice, Junior, you really need to sit down and behave. This is the doctor's office. This is not the place to be jumping around like a hooligan. And then when their child sits very quietly and is very respectful, they'll say, Junior, you did such a good job being quiet for the doctor. That's lovely. What's the problem with that? It's the same. If, to, to a little kid who is very concrete, there's no contrast. So it's the same to them, even though it's not really. Um, and then the other factor that's really important is practice. So I need multiple opportunities to practice getting it right and to practice getting it wrong and see what happens. During one of the breaks, we were visiting about a behavior strategy that's being tried for, for your young person. And we talked about how maybe we just don't know yet if it's going to be successful because he needs some opportunity to practice. He needs some occasions of seeing what happens when he meets the goal and seeing what happens when he doesn't meet the goal to see that contrast before we're going to know if that intervention is going to be successful. So what we also know is that in terms of behavioral skills, how fast that learning happens depends on a mix of these. And you know earlier we talked about the diathesis stress model, right? That when you've got the genetic loading and you've got the environmental stress, when you have more of one, you need less of another. Same sort of deal here. We need predictability, we need contrast, and we need practice. If any of those features is not present, the others have to be present even more so to compensate for us to get the level of learning that we need. So if we have parents who are highly predictable, very consistent, but they just can't muster much of a contrast, the predictability can carry the day, but it's going to take a little bit longer, right? If it's a behavior that doesn't happen very often, but we've got great consistency and predictability when it does, and there's high contrast, it'll still happen. It's just going to take longer. So ideally, we want all of these things in place, and then learning happens, and behavior change then happens more quickly. Does that make sense? <clears throat> 